In today's video, I'm gonna be ranking my festival outfits from the past. Mm, what the? Hey F-Word lovers, welcome back to my channel here on Living by the F-Word. Anyone that is new here, my name is Jess. I'm a fine artist, flight attendant, and festival enthusiast, and I love F-Words. Emma Capotis came up with this challenge. She ranked all of her outfits from festivals she attended in 2019. I am taking it on, girl, because everyone knows I love festival fashion. The first video I ever put out on my YouTube channel was all about outfits I wore to Desert Hearts Festival. I'm gonna remix this challenge a little bit. I am not going to rank a lot of outfits from 2019 just because that was a year that I dedicated a lot of time to volunteering at festivals. That being said, I did wear a few outfits, but not a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rank my past outfits from when I started raving and going to festivals all the way up until now in 2020. The reason why I also wanted to do this was because a lot of people always compliment my outfits at festivals, but festival fashion was never how it was like it is today. There are so many amazing brands out there. And so I thought it'd be really cool to kind of see the evolution of my rave fashion closet, how I've progressed and how the culture itself has progressed. So I really hope you enjoy me rating these outfits. Let's get into the first one right now. First outfit I'm going to be talking about is from Ultra Music Festival 2012. This basically was the first major rave festival that I went to. Um, and back in the day then, it was all about the neon colors. So I just wore this teeny tiny neon bikini with shorts and a fanny pack. First of all, can we just, before I even go any further, have a quick moment of silence for Jess's body circa 2012. Thank you. <laughs> the next outfit I'm going to talk about is my Sensation White 2012 outfit. This outfit I got a little creative with. I had white suspenders and gloves and a masquerade mask with feathers on it and it was pretty cute. I thought it was pretty cute compared to what some other people were wearing. So now we're heading into 2013. Groove Cruise has a lot of theme parties and a lot of people participate by making their own fashion accessories and outfits and things to wear. It's so much fun, honestly. Like this really probably got me into feeling more comfortable as to wearing more like actual rave attire compared to maybe just a bathing suit and shorts. So the first outfit I'm gonna talk about is from the Shine the F Up theme where everyone just wears sparkly stuff. And I wore this cute little sequin shorts with a sequin type like blue aqua bra. And there was a fanny pack that I made, uh, it was Dead Mouse. And so everything was just kind of sparkly. I felt pretty cute. I had these like little glitter headband ribbon things that I wore around my head and around my thighs with my thigh highs to make it a little bit more shiny. <laughs> the next outfit I'm gonna talk about from my first Groove Cruise is a schoolgirl outfit that I wore. It was cute, it was just like a bodysuit and like red and white and black theme kind of thing going on. Um, a lot of people wore the clear glasses, so I had a pair of those. I had little red bows on the thigh highs to match everything and I was feeling super cute. It wasn't that comfortable wearing the garter belt. I really am like a comfort is key uh, type of person, so I just, I don't know, I think I changed pretty quickly out of this one. The next outfit I'm going to rank was some sort of animal theme. So it, I wore a lot of neon, I wore some like leopard print, and then I wore fluffies that I made myself along with a scooty that I made myself as well. This was one of the first things I ever 
crafted and made for myself and I was so fucking proud guys. It was so cute and then I ruined it because I washed it and put it in the dryer instead of air drying it. Big fail. It looks like shit. I still have it just because I can't let go of it, but it was, I was just so proud of making this Scooty. I had never sewn before. I bought a sewing machine and I was like, I'm making my own Scooty. And they were really popular back then. Uh, they still kind of are popular a little bit, but back in 2013, like they were huge. Like you could put your hands into them and like, it was like you could have a scarf and it was just so much fun. The next outfit I'm getting into is a superheroes versus villains theme party. I went to Walmart and I bought a kid's shirt, a Batman shirt that was like yellow and blue and I just loved it. Kind of was like a little crop top. I bought little blue booty shorts and I went to, I think Joanne's Fabrics or I went somewhere and I bought Batman material and I sewed little Batman uh, like symbols and, and stuff like on my underwear, on my little booty shorts. And then I had a blow up thing that said pow on it. So it was kind of like really like comic type theme and super, super cute. And then I took a Batman mask and I cut it so that I could just like kind of wear it on my head because I didn't want it on my face. Welcome to 2014, where I started making a lot of things to wear at raves and festivals. The first outfit I'm going to talk about was from Groove Cruise Miami, the Fanta C theme party. So I made myself this adorable little outfit with seashells and netting on it. And then the best accessory for it that I also made were these fairy wings that I sewed EL wire into and they spelt out Groove Cruise and they were sound activated. So this outfit was completely incredible. I loved it. The next thing I'm going to talk about is a Harley Quinn outfit that I made. I don't remember the theme for this one. All the Groove Cruises are blending together for me at this point. So I made this uh, rave bra. This was when rave bras were really starting to blow up everywhere where everyone would decorate their own rave bra bras. And I, I truly feel like this is what started rave fashion companies, people starting to make bras to sell to people that maybe weren't as creative. So I sewed tulle around my neck to have like this like collar looking thing and I had it crisscross in the front. The next outfit I'm going to talk about is the Pirates of the Car Car <laughs> The Pirates of the Caribbean theme party. I loved this outfit. I just loved the black and gold. Everyone looked super legit. I felt super good in it. I had this scarf that I just kind of tied around my head with a gold chain looking headband. I had a gold bra that I attached gold chains to, which is right here. I made it into something else. And I just absolutely thought I rocked this theme. I loved it. The next outfit I'm going to talk about is from the Super Bowl theme party on Groove Cruise Miami 2014. This was so much fun. When Groove Cruise announced the dates, I remember everyone was kind of freaking out. Like everyone was like, okay, well, we're still going to go on Groove Cruise, but is there any way we can get the Super Bowl? like somehow on the boat. And so it ended up being such a sick party because everyone was just rocking their favorite teams. I love this outfit because it ended up being so cute, so much cuter than I expected. I'm not really into the NFL that much, um, but I would say that majority of my family supports the Giants and so I'm from New Jersey and so I just went with Giants attire and so I have these cute little sunglasses that were like G-Men football sunglasses. I bought a Super Bowl Champs shirt that was super tiny and then I ended up cutting it more to the point where it basically came like this so my boobs popped out and then I got my boobs 
painted like footballs. <laughs> Shout out to Manny for doing that. So this was a super super fun outfit I also had flags as accessories that you could kind of see on the side there And so whenever people weren't drinking I would throw a flag at them and it was really funny Okay, so now I'm going to talk about an outfit that I made for Groove Cruise Los Angeles 2014 the 50 shades of Disney theme. I was a naughty white rabbit. I absolutely love Alice in Wonderland. And I had this cute little yellow vest with um, a, a clock that I made. So the first picture I'm gonna show you actually was when I was first putting it all together and I didn't have ears yet or the clock made. But then I got uh, little bunny ears and a little cute red hat and I made a clock out of styrofoam and different crafts from Michaels. But it was so cute guys, like seriously. Finishing up 2014, I'm gonna show you two outfits I wore to Tomorrowland. This was the second Tomorrowland that I went to. I didn't show you any outfits from the 2013 one because honestly I was in tank tops and shorts. The rave and festival culture in other countries outside of the US is very different. So I feel like anyone that's from the United States is really lucky because our festival culture is amazing and very open and loving and respectful and you're very free to wear whatever you want. Whereas other places, it's just not like that. <laughs> the first outfit I'm gonna talk about is my hot pink rave outfit. So it was just a cute little crop top shirt that said rave and hot pink and then I got little soccer socks that had the same exact pink on the ankles and I wore a feather mohawk that I made for Groove Cruise for I think it was uh hmm. It was a carnival theme, so I made a feather mohawk. I had seen people in Burning Man pictures and all these places have these feather mohawks and so I decided to make one for myself. It was the first headpiece I ever made for myself and just a little note it is frowned upon to wear feathers at Burning Man. I did not know that until I went out there and all the rangers basically were evil eyeing everyone with feathers so don't do that it creates moop go watch some of my burning man videos if you want to know what i'm talking about the next outfit i'm going to show you is from tomorrowland again i think it was the first day and everyone kind of reps where they're from at tomorrowland so gotta wear america i had the big bald eagle spread wings like red tie-dye shirt i cut along the sides and the back to make it different. And then I wore my feather mohawk again. The feather mohawk I absolutely loved because I worked so hard on it. And on top of it, it was helpful for my friends to spot me a little bit that way. So that was another reason why I wore it. Now I'm gonna welcome you to 2015 where round glasses were so huge, you guys. And this was from Coachella. 2015 this outfit i love this photo i love this outfit i just felt like i was rocking it i had this cute little crop top from a lot of the crop tops and stuff i had was from joyce leslie i don't know if anyone knows what that is but that place was my jam guys i miss it it's a store that's no longer open i miss it so much i got so many little cute festival crop tops and outfits from there and this was a top that had red sparkle sequins on it and I just wore blue aqua shorts and some bands and was just feeling it. Next we are going to Electric Forest 2015 which was my second forest and this was another mohawk I made. I just loved making them. I loved making different colors. This particular one was black green feathers with hot pink in it. And so I just wore a bathing suit that I had with shorts. I'm sure a lot of people right now are like, holy shit, how did you wear all these jean shorts? I know there's other festival content creators that talk about wardrobe malfunctions that they have with shorts. <laughs> I never had a problem with them, so as you can tell. That particular day, I decided to go to BL Visuals, go check them out, guys, and dip my arms in pink and green and black paint, and so that was my look.
Welcome to 2016 and I'm going to start out with another feather mohawk outfit. This one I made in 2015 for Electric Forest and I ended up wearing this one to Coachella in 2016 as well and I had this tan top that I have had for a long time, I think from Forever 21 to be honest with you, I don't really know. And then some regular just jean booty shorts, that was my thing. Next outfit from Coachella 2016. This particular outfit was super casual, super cute, loved it, just kind of kept it neutral colors and army print. My friend Keith Christopher, it was his, it's his, my friend Keith, so I was wearing an army snapback that said man pretty on it, which is my friend Keith Christopher. He's a DJ, that's his brand. So I was wearing that with a crop top similar to the other red sparkle crop top. Um, pretty much exactly the same, zipped up in the front, had little like cutouts in the side, super cute. And then the scarf I was wearing was my mom's, so it's vintage. I'm very into scarves. Could you tell? I love bandanas and scarves. They just give a nice little pop and dimension to outfits. So uh, the funny thing about this was that Anita, um, who I worked for, for Coachella, ended up wearing ARMY the same day. I swear, we were in different rooms and we didn't plan it. And then we both ended up wearing ARMY this day. She's my soul si sister. Go check out her new podcast at Anita Bass. Here's another Coachella 2016 outfit. Very simple. As you can tell, these types of outfits were basically all I wore. Crop tops and shorts were a staple for such a long time for me. And then I have this bucket hat that had this cute little print, uh, once again with the round glasses, and then the bandana I'm wearing, which you see quite frequently in a lot of the outfits I wear, is my mother's as well. I have a lot of bandanas and scarves that were my mother's and my nana's, and I like to wear them because one, the patterns and the colors are vibrant and awesome and two I just feel like they're with me when I wear them so I like to wear them and keep them with me. Jumping into my Burning Man 2016 outfits the first one I'm gonna talk about might look a little familiar to you guys. This is the outfit that's right here behind me. I made this for my first burn before I really realized that these types of outfits are not comfortable at Burning Man and I guess part of the reason for me thinking that a lot of people actually wore these types of outfits around Burning Man was because of the issue with decommodification that's going on in the community. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I made a whole video about the 10 principles of Burning Man. Go check it out. I'll try to link you a card. I'm not going to dive into it into this. but it kind of like tripped me up going out there and realizing like, oh, okay, this is not what it's like. <laughs> so I made this outfit for that, but really did not keep it on for that long. But it was nice that I made it because I ended up using all of these pieces and continue to use these pieces for other festivals and outings. So I'm happy that I made it. And plus this picture is one of my absolute favorite pictures from that year. This outfit that I'm going to talk about was super comfortable. This was when I first started to see rave attire kind of popping up everywhere. There was a lot of companies that were making bottoms and tops and all these cute little matching outfits that you see today. It's high-waisted tie-dye velvet shorts and then there's a crop top with a hood that goes with it. And I also made the goggles and the sunglasses that I'm wearing and they were the first goggles that I made for Burning Man and I still wear them to this day and I absolutely love them. Welcome to 2017. This was an outfit I wore to BPM, SXM, a ton of different places, so I wanted to throw it in there. Just cute little neon bikini, but I made the hat. I went and got some pom-poms and put them around the brim, and then I added the little chain so that if the wind took it, it would not fall off. Next outfit I'm gonna talk about is Jazz Fest 2017. This was a jumpsuit that I wore to Electric Forest, Burning Man, a bunch of different places. I absolutely love the colors and the print. It's just so amazing. And I wore a captain's hat that I made for Burning Man the previous year and everyone just loved this hat. I couldn't believe how many people had never seen a captain hat before, but Jazz Fest is multi-genre and really about the 
NOLA culture so I guess it's not that type of festival where people are dressing up a lot and I got stopped by so many people to take pictures. It was really like a nice feeling. This was also my 30th birthday. Welcome to 2018. The first outfit I'm going to show you is from Envision 2018. It was just a black bathing suit bodysuit that I got off of Amazon. I like how it has the open sides and it's hard to see the front but I'll try to find a picture to show you what it looks like and then I just had a colorful bandana around my head. That was it. It is so hot and sticky and humid at Envision that it is unbearable to wear anything besides a bathing suit or next to nothing. <laughs> this outfit from 2018 Miami Groove Cruise is one of my favorites. It was for the Wet Circus theme party where everyone was circus animals and circus ring leaders, ring masters, and stuff like that. That's what I was going for, so I made my own top hat, which I wear to every festival that I go to everywhere. The print on this vest is amazing. I thrifted this, guys. This was a $1.50 from Goodwill in Reno. It was a size small. Clearly, I'm not that small of a girl. And so it had sheer sleeves that I ended up cutting off and flipping the shoulder pads out. And that's how I wear it all the time now. And I absolutely love it. It has pockets. It's amazing. The print is so trippy. It's so great. But the reason why I wanted to show you this outfit was because I was so out of my comfort zone. I wore a bra where the there's no cups in the bra. And then I wore pasties from Gina's Gems. And I was just feeling everything about this look with the spun glasses I had on, everything about this. This is one of my favorite looks I've ever done. We've made it to 2019 where I volunteered a lot, but I am gonna show you a few outfits, one from each festival I volunteered at that I wore. And so the first one is from Groove Cruise Miami. It was during a sunrise set, of course. So this outfit, I was wearing the top hat that I made that I was just talking about, and I was wearing a vintage Reebok windbreaker jacket that is so sick guys i love this jacket i love the print it is so vibrant and just absolutely amazing and then i just wore a sports bra and leggings and why are you platform shoes that had the clouds on them super adorable i usually rock my besties boutique fanny packs with a lot of these outfits absolutely obsessed with her brand the next outfit I'm gonna talk about is an outfit from Desert Hearts Festival 2019. This was such a fun outfit. The hood is reversible. It is colorful on one side with all crazy print and then on the inside it's kind of like a cream colored with speckled gold and then it has some gold chains that tie together. I thrifted this at the Buffalo Exchange for maybe eight bucks, not even, and then I am wearing a simple sports bra. I think it's from Forever 21, just black with the white and black checkers on the side. The checkered look was super in and a lot of prints around 2019. And so the bottoms, which are from Rave with Mahenti, who I absolutely love her brand, had little check marks in the side and that's how I decided to pair them with that and the suspenders. And then I had rainbow fishnet and I had Why Are You platforms and I just was loving this outfit. I loved a lot of the looks I rocked at Desert Hearts. They have a fashion show there. They have so much amazing fashion at Desert Hearts. The next outfit I'm gonna talk about is from Electric Forest 2019. This was my flower power outfit. Uh, you can see um, it's the headpiece right behind me. I made this for Groove Cruise for a represent your colors theme and I'm, now I've just recycled it. I rewear it with a lot of outfits and this particular outfit I got immediately from The Light Couture who is absolutely amazing. I'm a brand rep for her and you can use F word to save money. Just a little 
shameless plug there, but uh, I've been following Kristen's brand forever since she was a tutu for you. Basically back in the day, like 2013 or like whenever, like the tutus and the fluffies and the rave bras were huge. I've been following her. When she came out with this outfit with the fringe, oh my God, the vibrant flowers, everything was so amazing. And little backstory about this photo. So I actually went to Vibe With Aid and Festival Finessers YouTube meetup. I met up with them and then I went to explore the forest a little bit with the Festival Finesser. We were just chilling like in the forest, like in this little purple dome thing. He was talking to someone else, one of his subscribers. And the next thing you knew, I just saw a group of beautiful women in bright neon clothes like all different shapes and sizes just like so rocking it and i noticed they were getting their photo taken and i was like oh my gosh it was my friend lizzie rose taking a photo shoot for rolita couture which was just so awesome that like in that moment i was right there so i went over to say hi to her and i basically photo bombed the 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 shoot because she took a few pictures of me and that's how I ended up with these awesome pictures in this outfit by the light couture next outfit that I'm gonna talk about is from burning man 2019 absolutely love this outfit threw it together super quick with a lot of other pieces that I've had throughout the years and the holster I'm wearing is from dolls kill I really honestly guys love the holster look I want to get a mystic fables holster so badly her pieces are made from real leather and so time consuming to put together they're so expensive I'm honestly gonna have to save up for one but one day I will have a mystic fables holster but uh, this look was super fun wore that bandana that I that's my mom's and some brown shorts that have cute two cute little zippers up the front and super comfortable absolutely love this outfit had a lot of fun and uh, in this picture here, I'm taking a pickleback shot and the pickle juice was in a Donna shot glass, which is my mom's name. So that's why I look so pumped in this picture. I was, I just felt like she was with me in that moment. We are in present day Groove Cruise 2020 this year where I rocked for the represent theme, the skirt you see behind me. It's an open face skirt that I made. Uh, the one, the outfit that I showed you from Burning Man 2016. I also am rocking the bodysuit from Dolls Kill and my top hat, and I'm wearing this bandana uh, scarf, as you could see. So I just love colors, as you could tell. Absolutely love colors, color everything. It's like a rainbow explosion has happened, and I love it. And I wore Why Are You Shoes with this one. The next outfit I'm gonna talk about is the steampunk theme from Groove Cruise Miami 2020, which was my favorite, favorite theme that we've ever done. And I, everyone just rocked this theme. And I made a new top hat for myself. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw my story of how I made this. I also think I'm gonna throw up a YouTube video if you guys are interested on how I made my steampunk hat, which lit up and just was, so amazing, I absolutely loved it. I wore a spiked bra with it and then I had a um, purple velvet like, um, I had a purple velvet like ho holster. Mm -hmm. I had a purple velvet stomach holster piece from Jay Valentine that I got from I Heart Raves that I wasn't sure how it was gonna fit on me and I absolutely loved it. And then I also wore fishnets and Why Are You platform. I also made a cute little choker necklace out of some extra trim I had in my studio with a steampunk looking dragonfly that had gears on it. The next outfit is from Cross super sporty look for both looks both days I wore my we're never going home beanie hat with the GC fam raves harder cuz newsflash we do a jacket <laughs> uh, which is reflective and I also wore it with a the slither crop top from the light couture 
<laughs> and just some black leggings and why are you shoes super comfortable so now that I've gone through all of the outfits throughout the years I'm going to tell you what my top three outfits are and rank them drum roll please I'm going to nominate three other content creators to keep this challenge going. I'm going to nominate Frisky Hug. We have to get a male up in this challenge. I wanna see some male festival fashion and what he got from over the, what he. <laughs> three content creators that I am tagging are Frisky Hug, Becca Grace Original, and Emma from Raving Rainbow. Have fun guys creating this challenge and if you all loved this video please give it a like subscribe to my channel if you're into f words and you're an f word lover and thanks for living by the f word with me see you in the next video peace